Hello everyone, welcome to today's US Open live webinar. I'm your host, Nikos Zaburas, Senior Market Specialist at FXCM. Uh, it is Tuesday, April the 25th, at our usual time, 13.20 GMT, 10 minutes before Wall Street opens. This has been a slow start to the, to the week, but things uh, heat up from today onwards as we expect a barrage of uh, earnings from tech heavyweights uh, such as um, Facebook parent Meta, uh, Alphabet, um, Microsoft and others and key economic uh, data from the US and elsewhere. Before we dive into that however as always please read carefully to the risk warnings and the disclaimers and then we will get started. Once again, please read carefully through the risk warning and the uh, disclaimers and bear in mind that anything discussed in this webinar does not constitute investment advice and should not be construed as such. Okay, let's uh, get the ball uh, rolling. As I already mentioned, we didn't, um, we, we do expect um, significant earnings from uh, big, um, from big tech, big tech in the United States and uh, economic uh, data coming up. We will talk about that at the last part of uh, our session as usual. Uh, but the week started in a more slow fashion, let's say we, we didn't have any significant releases to chew on and as such markets uh, are mostly reacting to last week's themes, awaiting for a catalyst from those uh, data what to expect over the coming days and uh, weeks. Uh, market participants continue to contemplate elevated inflation, prospects of recession, restrictive monetary policy setting, while biting fears creep back in after the quarterly report from the First Republic Bank, the regional US bank that had come under intense pressure after the collapse of Silicon uh, Valley. These are all themes that we have discussed before. We will get uh, more into all of that. Let's start with um, EuroUSD as we uh, typically do. Aggressive comments from uh, ECB officials continued well into this week. Mr. Wunsch, for example, spoke of uh, rates going as high as 4% from current 3%. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Snabel did not rule out another 50 BPS move, although it looks like there are uh, chance, there are, there are expectations for a slowdown with a smaller hike, but we will have to we'll have the chance to talk about that um, over the coming days. Fed officials on their part also uh, were somewhat hawkish. They pushed on the higher for longer narrative last week right before the communication blackout period. Mr. Harker, for instance, 
noted the need for additional tightening in order to reach a restricted policy stance and then hold rates in place. Now, both the US Fed and the European Central Bank are announcing their policy decisions next week. So that is going to be big and likely a catalyst for uh, the trajectory and the path of uh, Euro USD. The pair now ended its um, seven week profitable streak. And the lack of progress creates scope for a slide towards the 200 period EMA at around 1.0880. The outlook has not changed much from what we have been uh, discussing uh, over previous sessions. A strong catalyst, however, would be needed for a break below this level, and the downside seems well protected. We can see that we have a daily Simoku cloud and ascending to the line, a uh, uh, longer uh, 200 days exponential moving average. So, uh, well supported. The downside and of course uh, both uh, the fundamentals the policy rate differential at the states and the technical outlook uh, still favor favor the common currency the road remains towards 112.33 remains open but the outcome will likely and the path forward will likely be determined by upcoming um, economic releases that we'll talk about towards the end of our session and of course next week policy pivotal policy decisions by both the ECB and the Fed. Let's leave um, your USD behind us move on to, into US soil we continue to monitor uh, price activity here closely. The commodity had its first losing week since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank in mid-March, which led to a breach of the 200 period EMA here, as a highlight, uh, as broader, a broader cautious mood due to recession fears and tighter monetary policy uh, has taken hold recently. This creates risk for a deeper correction, but uh, the next major support area is located for me at around 715070 uh, and it looks still a bit distant despite the the slide china's reopening and opec plus cuts for which we have talked extensively are expected to lead to tighter oil markets uh, and the commodity started the week on the front foot closing Monday above the MA 200 period and of course above the 38.2% Fibonacci of the March low high rise. Corrections contained by these levels, this region here, are limited and can lead to new 2023 highs, here 83.55, but bulls don't inspire much confidence for now for uh, further strength above this level and towards 90.36. Uh, so the push and pull between demand fears and uh, tight supply continues. As we said, China's reopening and cuts by OPEC Plus uh, are supporting, but on the other hand, prospects of a recession, of a global recession and tight monetary policy uh, by the Fed and other central banks around the world create fears about demand, the demand outlook. And as we, as the as Wall Street is about to to open, let's uh, move over to uh, the Nasdaq. We stay on a four-hour chart. So as we said, fears around the banking sector creeped back in after regional US Bank, US Bank First Republic disclosed a 40% decline in deposits in the first quarter due to the fallout from the SVB closure. Regional banks then had come under pressure and First Republic was one of the most impacted, mainly due to, or partly at least, due to a large amount of uninsured deposits. 
Um, now, after the 2023 uh, high earlier in the month, NAS100 has entered consolidation mode, as you can see highlighted in this uh, gray box. And it is right on the verge of a bull market. It gains around 20% from uh, the, the, the last low uh, of uh, which had been set. If we go back here, it had been set um, <clears throat> in late 2022. Let's bring our chart forward again. So it is on the back foot today ahead of the tech earnings that we discussed and key data threatening the 200 period EMA uh, just a little above where the price is right below where the price is right now and this and this could bring the broader 12,400 region in the spotlight. this region right here. But um, we are cautious about sustained weakness yet because the fact of the matter is that uh, Wall Street and uh, NAS 100 in particular have, have shown remarkable resilience against all those headwinds we have seen recently uh, and that we have also quickly mentioned uh, today. Bulls are in control above the 200 period DMA and uh, they have the ability to set new highs, 12,238 are the last highs, but the next uh, significant technical level seems distant at 13, 4, 7, 4, 7 to 4, sorry. So as we said, uh, markets are now looking to big tech earnings, Microsoft and Google Google parent alphabet actually, um, face off uh, today after, mar after US markets close. Microsoft, of course, the AA, the artificial intelligence front is uh, in the spotlight. Microsoft has the first mover advantage where uh, alphabet seems to be, to be far behind in the uh, race to uh, AI supremacy. So, uh, of course, there are many other aspects around these earnings. We will be looking closely to the results. Now, uh, we also have Amazon on Thursday. Amazon uh, managed in Q4 to break back into profits but barely following three losing quarters and of course on Wednesday we have Facebook parent meta platforms uh, which is again I will be closely looking to this one as well because uh, the, the CEO has vowed to make the company more efficient with cost cutting measures and layoffs after the hardships um, and the sell-off of 2022, and he also seems to be moving away from the disappointing metaverse towards the generative AI uh, that has taken the world by storm, as we have already discussed. You can also find a, a preview video of uh, Meta's platform on your respective FXM uh, websites, your respective regions, and other than the earnings, we also expect on Wednesday, Q1 CPI inflation from Australia. In Q4, inflation had accelerated by 7.8%, the most since 1990, but the Reserve Bank of Australia believes that it has peaked, and earlier this month it had, it had paused its rate hiking cycle, but has kept the door firmly open to further tightening. Now on Thursday, before our next session, we expect GDP uh, figures from the United States, preliminary uh, figures for the first quarter from the United States, which comes against uh, Q4 final of 2.6% expansion. And, then, and we also get figures from Germany, which had contracted by 0.4% in Q4 quarter over quarter, and Euro area, 
which had stagnated. So that's pretty much it uh, for me for today. Thank you for joining me. We will talk again on Thursday, same time, 10 minutes before Wall Street opens. <laughs>